a Christmas bird count um, up at Fall River Mills every year and uh, and checking uh, uh, rare rare bird sightings all over the North State. He's one of those people we go to to say, what was this little Impidinax flycatcher? Or in this case tonight, with all of these uh, hard to identify hawks, he's gonna be going through and, and helping us with that, uh, with that project. And so I will uh, turn things over to him right now. And uh, please welcome Bob Yetzi. Do I need to do my start video? I assume you, uh, you, you do share a screen. You talk and we see you now. Okay, I just we did. see you now. So when you're ready, you can share your screen. Okay, I want to welcome everybody. Thank you for having me into your home. Ha ha. Let's see. Um, I wanted to mention that Larry has agreed, or Larry has put up my uh, hawk identification uh, ID notes on the Wintu website. So uh, hints and tips, um, more than we're gonna be able to cover tonight are in that uh, document that's gonna be on the Wintu uh, website. So let's see if we can get into the slideshow. I wanna do share screen, is that right? Correct. Well, let me also say that um, the, uh, uh, the document that Bob is talking about uh, is on the, um, on the website uh, where the calendar shows this uh, meeting and it's right there. So you can actually, if you want to look at it on your computer, you can do that right now during the presentation. I thought I was gonna be able to share it on the chat, but it's, I can't do that. Okay, uh, I call this a primer or primer on local Hawk ID. And let's start going through what we have here. Can the uh, images on the right-hand side of my screen go away, you guys? Do you know? They're gone on our screen. It's up to the people who are watching. Well, I've got, the, yeah, I've got Bill Oliver, Larry Jordan, Wintu Audubon. Oh, here's Minimize. Maybe that'll work. Okay. All right. First slide, come on. There we go. Tilty vulture, rich stall cup, uh, famed uh, nifty California birder, um, called these tilty vultures, which lets you know more ID information there because they, uh, in their V dihedral formation, they tilt to the left and to the right, uh, ubiquitous. And I'm starting out, this one species will uh, compromise 99% of the flying hawks you will see in Shasta County, in my humble opinion. Otherwise, we're not counting ravens in that group. Redhead is an adult. Um, and the blackhead, which we don't see very often, darkhead is a juvenile. Silver and black, iconic. Sunning here, warming up in the morning. And here we are getting some heat on the back. Uh, this is up at Old Shasta, it was out in our yard where we used to live before the fires. And then we're gonna now go to the typical red tail hawk. Dark head, belly band, uh, and I'm calling this a 99% rule again. 99% of the birds we see are turkey vultures. And of the 1%, 99% of those are gonna be red tail hawks, in my opinion. Belly band and orange tail, and a lot of the ID guides say orange tail from above. And that's also true in several, several other species that are orange tail above. And the orange shines through on the tail, and we have an adult here. And a key fly feature of the flying bird that definitely tells us this is a red tail, even if we didn't have the orange tail, is the dark underwing uh, patagio markings in the fore area of the wing. If you don't see that, then you got another nifty hawk to go through. 
but if you've got that dark under the forewing and the patagial area, then it's clearly a red-tailed hawk. Um, something else, and I don't think I have a slide here of it, is we are often IDing on hawk counts, uh, red-tailed hawks, by the light coloring on the back shoulder, the lighter area, lighter scapulars, the shoulders on the back. So a really distant bird that you see nothing on except darkish up and down with a tail hidden behind the telephone pole cross pole, but you see that the shoulders are light. I'll give you almost 100% of the time, that's a red-tailed hawk. Here we have a typical juvenile, again, the black markings under the foredge of the front of the wing, and the fine barring uh, on the tail, and this is a pretty scruffy looking bird. And here we have a Jelly's Ferry uh, Millville Plains hawk that we had for, I think, four or five years, a really pretty Rufus phase red-tailed hawk. Uh, and in our documentation, we list either dark phase, rufous phase, or light phase. The orange tail here that you get an inc inclination of um, says uh, that I am an, ad an, excuse me, an adult bird. Sometimes you get a really dark bird. This is Sacramento National Wildlife Refuge kind of hiding in there. And this is a dark rufous phase because you notice we can still see rufous on the breast of this bird. Rarely will you see one that is really, really black. And if you do, I encourage you, try to make sure that it's not a uh, rough leg or a ferruginous or a swainson that all tend to be, um, we see their black phases more commonly. And here's kind of a favorite of mine, I guess, because you got to work to ID a red-tailed hawk to pull out the former species, Harlan's hawk. This is the Harlan's race of red-tailed hawk, hawk, a plains hawk of the central plains. And we seem to get one or two, it seems like every year or two in Shasta County. Uh, the identification is not an easy one. Uh, the key feature here is on the upper breast you have white dotting, and sometimes you get an almost all black bird with some white dotting. And I would say usually a little white on the nape or on the side of the head. Whether you see the tail or not, if you see the white spotting on the upper chest, you need to do a little bit more work to see if it might be a Harlan's hawk. They are a very pretty bird. This is the Harlan's hawk that was out on Dirsch Road. And I think the band on this bird is quite heavy. And it had me identifying this bird as a dark phase uh, rough leg hawk. And uh, Ed um, Popmeyer corrected me and said, no, 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 that's a Harlan's hawk. And this is a triple really neat picture. And I've got it because two of them sort of show what I want you to see on the tail. It's a messy orange sooty and whitish tail, and I didn't get here on the slide, with a sooty or dark tail band. Sometimes pretty thin tail band, but a black terminal band on the tail. If you see a light-phased Harlan's hawk, let me know. They're real hard to identify and very seldom seen. They're usually a much whiter bird than our red tails. Um, so give me a call if you see a white phase Harlan's hawk. This is just kind of an artsy mist, misty morning red-shouldered hawk. Um, I think kind of cool. This is usually a, a smaller and usually a trimmer. This guy's puffed up a little. Um, red-shouldered hawk. Typical is the black and white foredge to the wing, and here we have barring in the red upper breast. This is an adult. I call this picture a gentle looking soul. And here are the black and white checkered edges on the wings again, a key and easy feature to identify on adult uh, red-shouldered hawks. Barred breast, rufous shoulders, yep. 
And I would um, encourage you to learn the difference of the call between red-shouldered hawk and red-tailed hawk. Because when you're doing a Christmas count or a census of any kind, you can often get your red-shouldered hawk by the um, diagnostic call and distinguish it from another red tail calling overhead or screaming overhead. Beautiful picture in, in flight. And sometimes those rufous shoulders, believe it or not, aren't too easy to see on a perched bird. And of course, we don't usually get to see red shoulders from up above, I don't think very often here. Notice the beautiful heavy barring on the tail here. And this is a, uh, uh, you, I don't know, it's an odd phase. I don't think it's an adult. I think it's a near adult and uh, pretty much rufous all over. But you look at that tail and your uh, habitat for this guy. I say, if there isn't riparian or water nearby, you don't have a red shoulder. And this is the really nifty juvenile plumage of red shouldered hawk. Streaky. Um, banded or barred tail. And for many people, when you first see this bird, um, you're thinking um, broad winged hawk or gray hawk or something different. And they are pretty close in terms of the juveniles. Very distinct plumage. And uh, I've always thought it was a neat bird to chase for photographs because you get that shot in the first year and then the next year that bird's an adult and you don't get these pictures anymore. Rough-legged hawk, female or immature? Uh, rough legs are very dark on lower belly. They're often standing in a field. They've got big white rumps with a big black stripe on the tail, um, band on the tip of the tail, often standing out in a field. Here's a dark phase rough leg and a standard phase rough leg over on the left. Now I say standard phase rough leg, what I mean is juvenile or female. There is a way they say to tell the difference from the tail, you gotta do some detailed stuff. But anyway, both these birds uh, appear to be adults. Uh, the one on the left is a definite, um, I shouldn't say adult. The one on the left is a female or immature and the one on the right, I can't tell you. Beautiful dark phase rough leg hawk. Just love this picture. Um, by the way, going back, notice how the primaries here are not barred or banded. And that helps distinguish between some of the other like Harlan's hawk and uh, some of the other hawks. If we were only to be able to see a bird this well. And I've got this sort of mediocre picture uh, this is a bird I took a picture of up in Fall River. This is an adult male rough-legged hawk. And we see them up there. They, I don't know, they seem to be pretty shy from taking pictures, uh, for me taking pictures of them. But look at, the, you look at this bird. This is just oddly barred and streaked and ashy and um, all kinds of colors on it. Um, in, the, in most of the field guides, if you go back 10 or 15 or 20 years, they didn't even show what this bird was. It's only in the more recent field guides that they've started showing what an adult male rough leg hawk looks like. A particular favorite, fruginous hawks. And you go around the Anderson area, uh, up in the hills a little bit, um, and uh, out Leopard Drive or Leopard Road, you're, you, you can find fruit in this hawk. We even get them on Jelly's Ferry. Uh, a beautiful hawk. And we have to guess on this. Rufus leggings tell us that it's an adult. Are these leggings rufous? They look pretty much white and the barring uh, looks like it's uh, part of the breast feathers to help us tell an adult from a juvenile. And one of the keys on the uh, fruiters hawk also with the, the yellow sere is they have yellow lips. Never thought of it that way, but you definitely do see the yellow area around uh, the upper and lower mandible. But you're usually for this looking for a white, pretty much white bird 
with a dark eye line, and they're often seen standing out in a field. Uh, I've got this labeled as a juvenile, so. Okay, here's a back view. We often see them. They are fair, uh, see them like this. They are pretty tame birds a lot of times, so you're really able to get uh, good pictures and be able to study them some. Uh, we see here kind of an orangey tail, uh, white tail. Really pretty flight shot. Uh, here you see the bright white rump and the rufousy at the tip of the tail. Another orange red-tailed bootio, right? And this is an odd looking rufous phase bird. And look at those lips looking at you. Doesn't he look like he's smiling at us? Guess who took these pictures, Larry Jordan? A dark, very dark phase Fruginus hawk. And if you look at the upper right slide, you can see that that breast is not really pitch black, but it's got rufousy in it. Uh, again, it's real hard to find a really, really black uh, bootio that doesn't have some rufous coloration in it. Gorgeous, gorgeous flying bird. And they often will fly over you on Jelly's Ferry or um, Millville Plains uh, when, uh, up by Bascom Road when they're going around. Again, somewhat tame bird. And here we have very clear dark leggings that tell us it's an adult. And on a hawk count, that's one of the things you note, whether it's an adult or immature. And when you can, you note whether it is a male or a female. Swainson's hawk, uh, Ash Creek bird. Um, one or two pairs, usually in uh, Fall River, up uh, Dino out Dinoc Road or Bruce Crumb Road, one of those areas. We have a pair or two, and I find them pretty hard to find up there usually. Uh, some people are lucky enough to see them out on Rat Farm Road. Uh, dark hood, white chin, throat, upper brass, breast notably marked. Here's a bird coming in to land. Key feature on a Swainson's hawk, the light fore underwing and the dark primaries. So you see a V-shaped dihedral hawk sauntering around with a lightly banded tail, heavy band at the tip here. And this underwing pattern is a key. A number of years back, uh, Carol and I were going to Southern California, probably to chase a bird on I-5 in the winter. And we saw a Swainson's hawk. And we both looked at each other and said, whoops, Swainson's hawks aren't here in the winter. They migrate south. So we took some notes and wrote it down, uh, sent the report in, and found out that one or two had been seen uh, off of I-5 that year. And it was starting to occur a little bit more regularly, regularly in, to, in the winter. But it's still a super rare bird in winter. They pass through the valley and in our area. And sometimes we'll see them going through on Jelly's Ferry or Millville Plains, uh, or just driving along the highway. This is a dark morph Swainston's. Um, in most Budios, the dark phase is the rarest phase out here in the West. However, Swainston's hawk, that's not true. They're pretty, pretty regular. Uh, what, one out of three might be a, a dark phase that you see if you see three or four Swainston's. Just checking my notes here, flies with a V shape. Okay, this is uh, uh, an intermediate morph, uh, kind of unusual, but Swainsons are really variable, I find. Very variable hawk. Look at that, the tail bands that are pretty unique here to a Swainsons. Northern Harrier, marsh hawk male sauntering along with a v-shape usually pretty low to the ground and they are a, a surprise predator males hey Bob, with a, yeah sorry to interrupt you but um uh dan wants to know how he can tell that swainson's from a dark ferruginous hawk 
Um, the tail, man, the tail. So you got to look at, at the uh, Farouge is going to have a, what, a medium to darkish sooty tail with uh, even a little bit of a tail band. And a Swainson's, it's going to have these multi bars on the tail, even in the dark phase. You should be able to see that in the dark. Uh, Bruce Duo might be able to help us more on that, but you're getting into some more advanced hawk ID when you get into uh, dark phase. Uh, we used to go to Honey Lake every year with a bunch of uh, California birders gathering for three or four days, and everybody was chasing the dark phases. And you could sit in your car and listen to, no, 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 I think it's a fruge. No, it's a rough leg. Well, it could be a Harlan's. Uh, those <laughs> debates go on. And as people watch it longer and longer, the ID gets clearer and clearer. So did I cop out on that answer well enough? I think so. Okay. It's the tail, man. Okay. Marshy, Marsh Harrier, um, Northern Harrier, sorry. It used to be Marsh Hawk, then Marsh Harrier, now Northern Harrier. Any of those will answer too, right? The juvenile is Rufus below. And females are streaky. Uh, the, notice the owl-shaped facial discs. And this is a bird really commonly seen standing in a field. So when you're hawk watching, you're not just looking up at the sky, you're looking for a bulge out in the field. And here we have a good picture of a very streaky, uh, very little, if any, rufous tones. Uh, some really light rufous tones to this, but this is a nice uh, female, white rump is real clear on these guys. Again, dihedral, sauntering low over the ground, gliding, and ready to jump down on any prey that might be there. Okay, Cooper's hawk. Um, I would say that any occipiter you see, um, you first have to say it's probably a Cooper's. And I'm going to have to work to rule it into a sharp shinned or a goshawk. Coopers are the pretty common exhibitor in Shasta County. When you get into the juveniles with yellow eyes and dark yellow eyes and slightly orange eyes, uh, the eyes can be a tough thing to figure when you start getting them the juvenile. But when you've got a nice blue back bird like this, um, you get a feeling when you're looking at this bird at the cap, that he has a capped appearance. I'll show another slide right after this for a cap appearance. And I, my notation on this is, would you say that's a long tail? Holy mackerel, that's a hugely long tail. Um, look at the rounded tips to the tail, uh, graduated uh, rectrices with a pretty fair amount of white at the tip of the tail. So just seeing this bird's tail tells us what it is, and the rest of the plumage can look a whole lot like a sharp shin, but this is also a pretty big bird. Here's that capped appearance I was talking about. Uh, and that capped appearance, the dark cap, is a diagnostic feature of Cooper's hawk. We'll see in a second why we wouldn't call this a Sharpie. Adult barring on the breast on this bird, and look at that intense eye and look. Streaky immature, long rounded tail with pretty good white tips on the tail. I used to kind of say if like, if you think it's like a half inch or more, it's a Cooper's. They talk about the head uh, sticking out above the shoulders or elbows of the wing. Um, and one of the guides, uh, I think, is it Sibley, might say, no, it's the straight appearance line of the front edge of the wing that the head sticks out from. And Sharpies tend to have their shoulders forward more. So we'll get a chance to look at that in a second here. But they actually say the head size of a sharp shin and a Cooper's is the same, but Cooper's has a longer neck. Here we have a Sharpie, and you see how the cap continues down on the nape, the back of the head, all the way down to the back. 
Uh, if we saw this bird, we'd say, oh, I want to see the tail to be able to tell whether it's a Sharpie or Cooper's. Uh, Carol would say, no, that is not a distinct, pretty much separated cap. That cap goes all the way down to the back. It's a Sharpie. Look at this tail. I can't make that into a half inch of white on the tip of that tail looking at the picture. And when I see a real bird, we've got uh, barring and some streaking on the breast. This is a juvenile, I think, near adult. Um, a lot of the guides talk about small feet versus large feet. Uh, let's go back a look and look at some uh, Cooper shots and see if we can see much in that. I eh, can't see the feet, can we? Well, that's good, Bob. You didn't leave any feet shots. Uh, it's subtle. I. I I think Coopers have thicker feet, um, thicker legs, right? Not thicker feet, thicker legs. And I mentioned that these excipiters are part of a flap, flap, glide pattern for birds. So they'll take two flaps and then glide a bit. Now, red-shouldered whorls will also do that, but pretty much what excipiters do is the flap, flap, glide thing. Okay. Notice the, the uh, wrists, the four edges of the wing lean forward and the head is recessed back in. Of course, we have a very square teal, tail here without a lot of white on the tip of the tail. So we know this is a sharp shin. Ooh, goshawk. Magnificent bird, uh, pretty much a high mountain species. And I say, if you see a bird that's not in the mid-level mountains to the high mountains, and you think it's a goshawk, um, you better note some characteristics because they don't wander down a lot in my experience. Unmistakable when adult with the blue back. Here's an immature. How do we not call this a Cooper's or use my rule of let's call it a Cooper's and we got to turn it into something different? Well, if you can see a bird this well, you look at streaky under tail coverts. That's a key feature of goshawk. The eye line sort of curving up and being a pretty good eye line is another feature. Um, but I would warn you if you send in some uh, immature goshawk reports to eBird, I know an eBird reviewer, namely me, that's going to ask you for some details. A classic, exquisite, determined, pre determined predator photo. What do we got here? We have a goshawk on the upper right being chased by a rough leg hawk. Pretty cool. Something I really want you to notice on that goshawk, what we call white fluffies. Those fluffy upper, upper tail coverts are a real key feature, especially when you see a flying bird. Uh, pretty cool. And actually in Old Shasta, we had a couple of uh, times a bird that came soaring around and was showing white fluffies all over the place. And we had to work really hard to make sure that we agreed that that was a immature goshawk. Osprey, look at that hook bill. We know them very well from Lake Shasta and watch them fish all the time. Um, some, some of the guides used to say, you look for some uh, dusky on the upper breast to tell females from males, but I haven't found that consistent in, the, in hawk books. Dusky areas on the head uh, help you pick out an immature. Classic M-shaped when they fly, that's the elbows of the wing are higher, uh, like a gull. And this guy's, he's screaming, probably had a bald eagle just steal his fish, right? Pair of ospreys on a nest platform. And you got a fish, I want the fish. Notice the fish in the proper position facing, facing forwards, and the osprey has one foot forward and one foot back. 
I presume that is probably for uh, wind to cut wind resistance, but that's pretty much the way they catch them, one, one uh, talon in front of the other, and that's the way they carry them when they're flying. We do have a little uh, dusky upper on the on the upper bird on the left. We have some dusky streaking on the upper uh, chest on that bird. That may be a female. Here, we have some here also. How about a two for one? This guy, this gal is good. Elegant personified whitetail kites. Uh, I don't know why, but this seems to be an Anderson bird, and they don't make it up all the way up here to the Redding area much. We see them fairly rarely in Fall River, but there seem to be uh, probably some breeding pairs in the Anderson area. Notice the black shoulders for the previous name, black-shouldered kite, which uh, was the same name, I believe, of an African species called black-shouldered kite. Dark eyes, just just a nifty, nifty picture. Sometimes you gotta show pictures just cause they're beautiful. I took a very few of all these pictures, I have to uh, admit, I didn't take this one. White-tailed kite, just a pretty shot. And these guys get little prey, like kestrels do. They're getting mice, dragonflies, small prey. The juvenile, see some of the dusky and the rufous on this bird? And this is not, this, this um, age is not seen that often away from the nesting area. I have never seen one away from a nesting area in this juvenile plumage. This is a juvenile. You still see some rusty on the throat, but it's progressing and almost a near adult. Kestrel. Uh, what? The commonest bird of prey we have a lot of times, far more so than red tails. This is a male. Look at those blue wings, the double mustache. Teetering often on a line. And uh, kestrels are big tail waggers. Now, merlins also do it some, and we're going to talk about that in a second. Uh, I've got here that merlins don't, but I did some research, and merlins do wag their tails sometimes. So, uh, but these guys really like their balancing with the tail. They're really big tail waggers. When they land or when they're balancing on a telephone line, you can often ID a distant bird on a telephone line wagging a long tail. Merlins don't have tails that are that long. Here's a female with a brown uh, black barred uh, back and they're somewhat bigger. And uh, did you know that the difference in size between male and female means that different prey items are brought back to the young? and males often capture smaller prey to bring them back to the female to feed young, and smaller prey are easier for the young to consume and the female to uh, tear up to feed to the young. So the function of size there, and also who controls the nest, is a bigger bird. This is just kind of a classy shot of a male kestrel just before he's gonna reach down and grab a a mouse or a dragonfly or something. And I put on here that immatures are tough to ID and that's one of the things on a hawk count or just for fun you want to whenever you can ID adult, immature, male, female, just get you to look a little um, little harder at what you're watching. Uh, but I can't give you a lot of clues to immatures. They're a little spotty. Uh, I don't think they occur much away from a nesting area. And once they fledge, um, they change pretty quick to their adult plumage from what I can tell. Ooh, prairie falcon. Love to see prairie falcons. Um, this is a photo, I believe, by a good friend of ours, uh, Heather Thurman. Just 
gorgeous hawk. And one of my notes uh, to myself here is if you see a prairie peregrine, and you look at a log, long distance in a scope and you're trying to figure out which one it is, if you try really, really, really hard to make it a peregrine, it's not, it's a prairie. Look at the sandy colors and the uh, mustache mark. This is a shot that shows more habitat than it does the bird, but this was Rat Farm Road uh, on the way out, just uh, sitting, waiting for me to take a nice picture of it. Got my eyes on the prize, prairie falcon. A lot of times you can get pretty good pictures of prairie falcons on telephone poles. I don't know if they're considered tame, but I think they are intense on their prey. Therefore, they're not watching out for us as much. Long tail wingtips are less pointed than a peregrine. That's a subtle kind of feature. Um, I would also point out that if you are able to see a prairie or peregrine a lot, that you can learn wing flap. Um, prairie, uh, peregrine's wing flaps are very full and very heavy and very hard. And prairies, to me, don't seem um, to be working at as hard, if that's a way to phrase it. They don't seem to push the air as hard as peregrines do. Yeah, more sh a little bit more shallow wing beats. And look at this tail. Uh, I would say another species that in certain lights when they're way up above can show an orange tail, a la red tail hawkish. Of course, the shape is pretty distinct. Look at those dark armpits. So whenever you see a flying falcon, if you see the dark armpits, you know you've got a prairie. Uh, there is a subtle difference apparently between juvenile and uh, adult prairies with the amount of dark that is under the wing, but it's that's a pretty tough discrimination when you're watching a bird fly by at, what, 20 miles an hour or whatever. Okay, we have falcon shape here, long pointy wings, but these are not super pointy at the tips, are they? Peregrine falcon. I have to say, in my opinion, whenever you see a peregrine, you have to stop and take a breath and say, I am damn lucky. They're just so incredible. Dark blue backed, barred around the leggings, sometimes barred on the breast or streaked on the breast, like this bird. Can be around uh, dams and man made structures. And how about 150 to 240 miles an hour in a stoop? I can survey beaches too. Merlins and peregrines like to do beaches for shorebirds. And here's a peregrine waiting along the shore uh, for uh, some dinner. Intense, intense view. Uh, this is from uh, Doug Hare, Doug Herr, who takes some gorgeous uh, photographs here in the North State. Look at those pointy wingtips. That's really a different look than the prairie had. Very pointy all the way to the tip. Um, beautiful bird. And I just thought this shot was really cool I ran across. Kind of almost like a bat taking off or something, but this is a, a peregrine getting ready to go after something that was just caught in the picture. Gee, do I have a lot of pictures of peregrines here? Uh, yes, I do. Another peregrine, juvenile bird. Look at the uh, streaking and the rusty on this bird. And the wings are pretty darn pointy. Look at the tails different here, rusty on the tail. And here's a beautiful overhead flying shot. Wings aren't quite as pointy here because they're spread out a bit.
Merlin. Uh, most of the books will tell you there are three races, and you they all tell you three races, but they will say, try to um, identify as to race any bird, any Merlin that you see. Uh, I, there, are, there is a tough distinction when you don't have this one, which is the prairie race or Richardson's race. Lots of rusty tones to the body. And here in the next picture, the blue on the back. And I think Merlins are a really good predators for little guys. They, if you see a small falcon going from point A to point B, that doesn't stop for anything, full speed ahead, going right along, having trouble with your binoculars, stand up with him, you got a Merlin. Uh, in the Bay Area, we were trying to show a couple of friends a Merlin, and we could never get a Merlin that was, that was anything except flying full speed in the air, and we kept trying to give them all the hints. But you know, that's not enough for your life bird just to see this fast flying bird that doesn't wag his tail when he lands and it just keeps boogieing along. And this looks like a horned lark for dinner. Neither rain nor snow nor sleet nor hail. This is the uh, Richardson or Prairie race again with the blue back. This is at the Posse Grounds right at the Civic Center. This guy was out in the water where we're out looking usually for herring gulls and uh, whatever gulls are out there. And this is called the Pacific race, nearly all black. And the tough race I think is the tiger race, which is the third race. And it's kind of between the two. It's not quite as dark as this. Um, it, it's, it, it's not a simple ID. You gotta see the bird pretty well. A Merlin soaring. They do soar some, but not really that much. They pretty much, like I say, go from point A to point B and they're doing their thing. Pretty much streaky breasted, all of them. All right, golden eagles, pick a pair. Which would be the juvenile? Well, that bird over on the left with some white in the plumage. A golden eagle. Um, Carol points out that so often, if you get a chance to see the height of the bill on a sitting eagle, you can tell whether it's a golden or a bald eagle. And we'll see if we can see that in our pictures. I can beach comb just like peregrines and some of the other birds do, says this adult golden eagle. Although notice there's still some white in the wing and throat. So this is a sub-adult, almost adult. Um, they point out that, I'm gonna show it here, golden hackles can be seen on all ages. This is an immature bird with a big white rump and large black subterminal band, sub meaning just before the tail. And let's go back here and see. I have this slide in here to show you, this is a big bird. It's a rehabbed bird. Golden hackles can often be seen in the flight. Subadult here. Now the guides will say, there's only a little white in the wrist area and in the tail of golden eagles. If you see more white than that, you probably have a bald. But this slide is a good indication. There's white in those primary tips, in the secondary tips. So not just in the wrist, the primary tips, but also in the secondary and the middle. Um, but this is a golden hackle bird. You can clearly see a golden eagle. And this is a Doug hair shot again, just habitat. Uh, the Vista Point in Fall River, has had a breeding pair of uh, golden eagles on the, across on the other side that have been there for many years. And that's pretty much incredible, normal kind of habitat for golden eagles. We see them rarely on the uh, Jellies Ferry, uh, Millville Plains, Hawk Count. 
bald eagle unmistakable. Um, used to be a delight whenever you saw one, but they're doing so well now. And here's quite a shot of an adult and an immature. But look at those bills. They're just absolutely humongous. Huge feet. Did I say huge bill? If you want to take some great photographs of uh, raptors, um, get in touch with your local uh, raptor rehab organizations and see if you can come and uh, just from a distance take pictures. You can get some great photographs. I'm carrying stuff. I'm nest building, carrying my stuff. Juvenile immature. The tail here is almost like a gold one can be with a lot of white and the terminal black band. Or uh, Look at all the white in the body. This is clearly a juvenile bald eagle. And almost any eagle you see, you got to rule out bald first because they are so much more common in our county. Uh, golden eagles aren't rare, but bald eagles are super common. And if you can look at the face on this bird, there's a dark line going through the eye and some white on the head. It's what's called the osprey plumage, I believe. One of the guides says third year bald eagle. Um, and if you get a good look, you can ID first year, second year, third year, fourth year, and fifth year bald eagles. Zoom. I'm hot after prey and don't get in my way, right? It's a leucistic bird. Leucistic is, we used to call these albinos, but almost all albino-like birds are not fully albino. They don't have pink bills, pink feet, pink eyes, lacking pigment, and pure white plumage. So the term is leucistic, meaning how, having albino or white characteristics. I've not, never seen a bird like this. And I wonder, can you tell me, is there a moral to this story? Something about biting off more than you can chew. Guess what? Thanks for watching and having me present. And I got to say, it's really weird not to be talking to people, but talking to people. Well, thanks, Bob. Uh, yeah, that was a great presentation. Um, if anybody has any questions, uh, Bruce actually was asking, uh, because you mentioned budios, accepitors, and he said, but they're all called hawks. Can you break them down for us? <laughs> Bruce asked me a question that he can answer better than I do. <laughs> Let's see, accipiters are forest hawks, usually considered a uh, trimmer. Budios are more uh, broad-winged, broad-bodied, um, open field or, yeah, field hawks. Uh, what else do we need to do with that? I, to me, uh, the characteristics are more useful for putting them together. So you'd be saying, oh, I saw a, a Budio, but I don't know if it was a rough leg or a Ferruge or a red tail. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Um, I, I, I guess uh, lacking my, de my um, definition book right now, I was sort of also trying to correlate the hawks as you went through them with um, what the terms really mean. And uh, I don't recall what butiu may what it actually means. Um, so I don't know. Just a little bit on that. What the terms mean and and how those relate to the various. I wasn't aware of the field, the field hawk versus forest hawk type of description. Maybe I just made it up, but I, it seems to me I read it. I'm looking through some notes here because I remember 
somebody I was looking at in one of the photos talked about the eye as an ID, the height of the bill and the height of the eye, or width of the bill, uh, width of the eye and the height of the bill. And I can't remember what it was right now. Well, I, I, I guess the simple answer is buteos are, are, are a family right. as our exhibitors and, and get down to genus and species. Um, you're categorizing within those families. Right. Yep, as our kites and falcons are different groupings. I also wanted to mention um, a tip that I got uh, at the uh, Hawk Watch at Golden Gate Raptor. And I, I would uh, encourage anyone that hasn't been on a Hawk Watch. Um, it's about the end of the season now, uh, but it starts in September and goes uh, through November basically, but it's down at uh, the Marin Headlands and um, it's open to the public right now because of COVID, uh, you can't go to where the actual counters are working, but you can go up the hill. Uh, and also on the weekend, you can go uh, anywhere up there on Marin Headlands. But um, these guys would identify, it, it just blew my mind because they would identify, uh, you know, birds up to, you know, a half a mile or more away. And the guy would yell out, Sharpie or Coopers. And I'd go, finally, I had to go and ask him. I said, okay, how can you tell a, the difference between a Sharpie and a Coopers when they're a half a mile out? Because, you know, they have the same, like you said, flap, 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 soar, flap, 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 soar. And what he told me was um, when the Cooper's hop f uh, starts his soar, he dips. And the uh, mm -hmm. Sharpshin hawk does not dip when it, when it stops flapping. Yeah, we've been there many times when we were in the Bay Area, and it's, it is exciting it is fun um and if, if you really get into it um you can call it out too and let me i'm going to do a, a double kind of thing here locally if you see an exhibitor i would encourage you as soon as as soon as you see it take a guess take a guess then keep watching and further refine your id and pretty soon I mean, 10 or 20 or 30 or 40 of them go by over the years, you will start calling a Sharpie. Uh, Carol and I check each other. Sharpie, Sharpie. Okay, Cooper's Coop, yep. Um, just by a brief sighting. And you, you won't get that if you wait, 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 and it disappears. But flipping that back to uh, Marin Headlands, um, broadwing hawks migrate past the Marin Headlands. It is a very difficult bird to see in most of the Western US. And the competition, when you get, uh, we've been up there when there've been like four or five Audubon societies. And I, once or twice, I was leading, we were leading, and it, it's competition and you say, nine o'clock, way off, Broadwing Hawk. And everybody goes, no way. And, and, when you, and you say, just keep watching, just keep watching. And then people start going, no, you got it right from that far, right, Larry? Right. It's, it's very exciting. Uh, Red-shouldered hawks are uncommon up there and people get them a long way away. You just get a feel um, for size, wing beat, uh, shape, and we found it a whole lot of fun. You watch birds get to the Marin Headlands if they're going south and they will start out over the Golden Gate and then turn around and come back. And it's sort of like, I thought I could make it, but I don't know, that's pretty far. I think I'll go back and soar on the thermals a little bit. And then they'll go out a little further. You're, you're watching one bird now and it keeps making these little journeys, quarter of the way, third of the way, come back. Uh, made it halfway this, oh, come back. And then finally, it's like, I know I can do it, I can do it, I can do it. And they go all the way across 
and you actually hear people go, yay! <laughs> yes, I would, uh, I would, I would encourage um, everyone, uh, you can, and you can go to their website, the uh, Marin Headlands, it's uh, Golden Gate Raptor uh, Society, I think. Um, and uh, it is, it's really exciting to go up there when they're calling out birds. Um, I just checked their website actually before the presentation and they were seeing some days uh, in this, in, the, in uh, September, the end of September is where they see the most broad wings. And they were seeing um, 16 to 20 a day. So if you've never seen a broad wing hawk, uh, they're like Bob said, they're an Eastern hawk, but they migrate through that narrow path along the Marid headlands and um, you can add that to your list. Um, does, if anybody else has any other questions, you can unmute yourself and uh, go ahead and ask. Um, this uh, entire presentation was recorded and it will be on our YouTube website and um, make sure you check uh, the Win to Audubon calendar uh, because, like I said, the uh, the um, document that Bob posted with all those tips that he went through is uh, on that on the calendar under this Zoom um, presentation. I can mention a couple of things I see in my notes here. Uh, Cooper's hawks, their eyes appear smaller due to the larger head, and Eyes appear larger in a sharp shin due to the um, smaller head. Smaller head, yeah. It's uh, actually the heads can be real similar in similar age birds. Uh, Cooper's and Sharpie size comparison: a small male Cooper's and a large female sharp shin can overlap in size. So size isn't a great uh, ID feature, but I still encourage you to call it. Is the tail super long? Uh, one and a half times the distance between the, the head, front of the head to the back of the wings? I call that a Cooper's. If it's less than one and a half and it's a big bird, you gotta check that out for a goshawk. If it's uh, less than one and a half and it's a medium to smaller bird, it's probably a sharp shin. I just, can you guys hear me? Yes. Yes. Kelly. Hi. Um, I just wanted to resurrect the conversation we had at Grey Lodge last group visit. Um, that we were there. We had a discussion about juvenile golden eagles and bald eagles about how to tell them apart. And um, somebody said that it was the golden eagle that had uh, yellow lips and that the bald eagle did not and that was a definitive way to tell them apart. Huh. Makes me want to go back and look through all the slides. <laughs> well I looked it up in the book and it wasn't quite as explicit but um, so and then when we checked out in the field that was indeed the case but I imagine that at different phases of their life that might change as we've seen demonstrated in many cases tonight. But anyway, um, so that was something that I've always looked for now when I'm seeing juveniles to tell that. And, and then the other thing is that um, I have moved to Mount Shasta, lucky me, and uh, on one of my first uh, urban hikes, there was an urban, it was just a, you know, a trail close to where I live. And this Merlin landed right in, well, he had to be like eight feet away a, on a branch and he Ooh. just sat there for about a good 30 seconds just looking at me and I'm like, okay, what's the message here? But I was <laughs> thrilled. I was really, really thrilled to have that experience. So, and then he flew and it was so fast that, um, as you said, um, Bob, so anyway, that was an, a marvelous experience. That I you, to were, you were given a treat is what you were. I was. It was magic. Uh, golden, golden eagles uh, versus bald in flight. It's hard to focus, but if, focus on this, but if you can look at bill size, 
bald eagles have hugely thick, uh, tall bills. And golden eagles' bills, at a great distance, when you see the big, broad, wide wings, golden eagles' bills don't look very big at all, considering how enormous the bird is. Yeah, longer, lo it seems like a longer, thinner bill. Uh, I'll give you another feature. Golden eagles can show some dihedral, a slight V when they fly, and bald eagles reportedly don't ever do that or show that. Um, I don't think ever works as a thesis because I bet you can find you can find it occasionally, but we've always tried to remember which is the one of the two of those that does dihedral because sometimes you'll see a bird floating on a thermal showing a little dihedral and you go, is that golden or is that bald? Well, it's golden. Yeah, we've seen them soaring with turkey vultures before. Yeah, when, whenever we uh, when we do a trip to um, uh, to Dye Creek, because there's golden eagles that nest up there, I always tell the folks uh, not to just assume when you see a bird up there uh, soaring with dihedral. I said, take a good look at it because you know it, it could be the golden eagle that we're looking for. A huge bill and head projection in front of the wings for bald eagle. So that head projection in front of the wings, a la Cooper's hawk, is something I haven't noticed before, but I've never looked for it. Um, one of the things I like about doing programs like this is I do research and I learn things. And I think it's always good when you can, when you can learn things, right? Right. Right. <laughs> um, does anybody else have any more questions? If not, um, I think that pretty much wraps it up. Great, great presentation, Bob. Thank you, Catherine. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Thank, thank you very much, Bob. Larry, thanks for helping uh, navigate that. And uh, um, little reminder: next month we'll we'll go to Africa and see what's what's there. And also. Um, Remember, if, if you are a person who could, or you know someone who could help us out on our nominating committee, again, we're looking for people uh, who maybe feel like, you know, they, they, who, who have other circles beyond the ones that, that those of us on the board already uh, are in um, uh, to, to help fill out uh, our, our board and our, our volunteer positions please contact us at uh, webmaster at wintuaudubon.org um, and enjoy the hawks out there. Um, 